Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. Welcome back after the weekend. So October 18th here, and we're getting a little bit of mixed action in the pre-market space. Let's go ahead, switch over to the trading screen and talk about what happened today. I'm, I'm, today was a scratch day for me. I'm up $306 my day trading account, so not really anything too impressive. Maybe like a 2% day based on my average position size. Maybe a 2.5% day because I, I wasn't getting those $20,000 share sizes today. Um, I, I just, ah, uh, I, okay. Let's let's kind of recap what happened here today. I was up, you know, five six percent today. Uh, I was, you know, taking my profits. We were, we didn't have anything over forty percent, and I was, you know, kind of scalpy. I was constant, but I was constantly missing the pops. And at one point, uh, we got a pop, and I, you know, start getting aggressive on it, and it sells off. It sells off. It sells off. I cut my losses like I always do. I gave back all my pre market profit. And then it pops up again like 10%, and then it sells off, sells off, sells off. And if that ticker or if that price action sounds familiar to you, it's probably because you were trading IO today. And that's all IO was doing. It would pop up and sell off kind of like way too aggressively, way too long, way too exaggerated. And then it would pop up again like 10%, 20%, and then do it again. Um, and as a gap and go momentum trader, um, you know, I'm looking for those breakouts. I'm looking for that momentum. That's usually what I'm buying into or buying the pullbacks or adding higher. Um, and today was just, ugh, it was a really frustrating day. Um, so I was constantly, after I gave back all my profits, I just, I, I think that messed me up a little mentally. Uh, and then I got a little scalpy and it was just a little bit of a stressful day. So let's let's start with my biggest loser on the day, IO. This ticker's bothering me just looking at it. Um, then we'll go through other, other uh, tickers really quickly. And then I wanna talk about two swing trades that are looking really, really good. So let's go to IO really fast and uh, see what's going on with this ticker. And just look at this, every time it sells off way too extensively, Ended, it has like these huge 10% pops um, and then they just sell off again and probably it's going to pop up again 10%. I, I don't know. It's so tricky to trade this ticker. You basically just do the opposite of um, what you should be doing, at least for my day trading uh, strategy. So I owe, actually, let's start on the daily. Why not? So this ticker, um, yeah, long term doesn't really look that good. It has a lot of these failed spikes to the upside, but we have really high relative volume right now. So that that's what was looking good. And that's what got me interested on this ticker. That was really the big the selling point for me. Market cap, 60 million market cap. That's pretty nice. 29 million shares outstanding. That's also really nice. Energy company. Okay. Yeah, they have some guidance catalyst here. At least they have a catalyst better than nothing. Okay, so let's zoom in here. If this one pops up around, I think it was like 30% or so. Yeah, 35% sells off. I do a really quick scalp trade here. This is probably my best scalp trade of the day, literally. <clears throat> Um, my next trades were just a bunch of nonsense trades. And then look at this one. I eventually buy this pullback, and guess what? I sell right before the big breakout here where it runs up 10%. Then I chase this ticker, uh, buying into this move here and then all of a sudden it sells off and i close here before it pops up a little bit i sell near kind of the perfect low um but yeah whatever not a big deal on this one um let's let's keep scooting forward here and this is the five minute down here this is the one that really nailed me so hard um we had a big 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 uh 17 move after just this constant sell-off here and then i'm like okay IO, back in play, let's go. So I buy this pullback, a few times I get green again, um, but then eventually it sells off. I buy a little bit more on this pullback, it sells off more, and then eventually I close at 192, near the perfect low. Right after I sell, pops up here 6%. In this trade, I, I went up from like five, 6% on the day to all of a sudden down, uh, just, just slightly, I was just slightly down on the day after this trade. And if I just held for literally um, 10, 20 more seconds, uh, I would have been up like seven, eight percent on the day, which was really, really annoying. Um, so let's fast forward here again. I buy into this pullback. I luckily take this one pretty quickly. I try again. This one fails. Not a big deal here. I cut my losses quickly. Um, another, you know, extended sell off and the pop back to the upside. Really frustrating trading, uh, looking to trade IO. Um, I didn't trade it um, until the market opened where I was looking for a red to green move. Um, made some small profits being really scalpy on this one, um, but eventually it does have that, you know, again, like 12, 10% big pop. Um, I traded this extended pullback because I was like, let me be really careful on IO and only trade any pullback that's like way too extended. Um, so that's what I did here, but I did take my profits really f um, fast. And I only had 2,000 shares here when usually I'll be doing like four to 6,000 shares on IO. Um, overall, even 6,000 shares is small size. I mean, that's only $12,000 when I should be trading 20,000, 25, $30,000. So I'm still trading pretty small size on it um, relative for me. Uh, yeah, big extended sell off and then a pop back to the upside. 
Extended sell-off right now. Maybe we're gonna see another pop back to the upside, but volume's getting really light, so for me, it's time to walk away, but I don't know. It's it, Colby today in the Discord, uh, our moderator in the Discord, uh, totally slayed it today. He, he did exactly what uh, I should have been doing, basically buying extended pullbacks, uh, extended sell-offs, and then just selling on the first pops to the upside. Um, so he was he was good. He, he basically switched it up, saw, saw what this ticker was doing, changed his game plan a little bit, and uh, was able to walk away green. I can't really speak for Colby uh, per se, besides what he wrote in the chat room, um, but I could tell you, for me, my big mistake on this ticker was just not switching up my um, strategy. Um, I was constantly looking to ride a front side move. You could see the second this ticker was on the front side, what was I doing? I was buying pullbacks, looking for continuation. We didn't get continuation on IO, and that was really what put me in the hole on IO, um, which is really unfortunate. It's, it's a little bit stressful seeing these failed moves because it makes, um, especially because IO is one of the lead gappers on the day. So when you see this, you're just constantly like, oh, do I want to really keep trading um, any other ticker? And I think it rubs over to other tickers. But I did like the fact that we were over the 180 days simple moving average for a while I felt like this gave me a little bit of confidence um, but we so far we're not able to hold the highs if I think IO doesn't really sell off below 187 too much and definitely not below 180 I think we could have maybe like a mid or late day power hour run on IO we'll see what happens for me it's a it's a no trade at the moment but ah uh, yeah sometimes if you notice you're getting on the wrong side of a ticker, um, it's still a scalpy ticker. Let's say it's it's below 40%, definitely below 50%. Then you want to you know be a little bit more scalpy. You want to not be buying into breakouts. Something I say quite often, and I think I, I did do a little bit of that. I didn't get super aggressive into my uh, trading today on IO, so that definitely kept me from getting into a big hole but I should have adjusted a little bit harder and I should have been even more scalpy uh, on this ticker. So that was my mistake on it. And yeah, it is what it is. Um, let's go through these other tickers really quickly. TRMD, I think I only did one trade on this ticker, nothing super interesting. Daily chart, uh, second green day here, we're above the 180 day simple moving average. Uh, nothing too crazy. We have big resistance at $10. Let's quickly mark that. I don't think I marked that before. So $10, big resistance. We'll have a, some interesting support here around nine. So let's check out the daily here. Remember the five, oh, five minute charts always in the middle. The daily chart, we had some interesting moves, um, quick, what was this, like a 30%, no, 23% uh, move to the upside. Had a quick pullback here. That would have been a good trade. That would have been a 10% pop. I traded this pullback looking for continuation, but $10 showed to be too big resistance and we failed. But I, I realized that the sellers died or the buyers died off really quick. So I actually walked away with a small $50 profit on this one just by closing my trade really fast. Um, so that's sometimes nice when technically a loser trade, uh, TM, TRMD definitely was a losing trade. Uh, we walked away with a pretty much a scratch, but technically it's still green, so it feels nice. FCEL, this is a fuel cell. This is a company we've seen again and again. This is no stranger to me. Um, so I think when I saw it today popping up, I was like, ooh, nice, okay. Uh, we all know this ticker. Let's get aggressive on this uh, this one. And I think I traded this one back at the cash account. Nah. Yeah, or not. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, anyway, this one was popping up here. I knew we had room to run till $9, maybe even past $9 and $10. And that's why I was like, okay, let's get aggressive on this ticker. I wasn't even looking at any stats. Now going to the daily chart, and we'll scroll something refreshed. Um, we had kind of this scallop pattern right here. And I was like, okay, um, a nice little pullback here. And, and we were starting to rip to the upside. I wasn't looking at this ticker till after this break, green candle breakout. And I didn't feel comfortable buying into these green candles just because I just pulled this ticker up. Um, so I was waiting for a pullback of some sort. I got this pullback entry and I sold right away uh, for a very, very small um, percent profit. And I think the reason I sold so quickly is because IO was conditioning my brain all day today to just scalp and sell really quick and not ride any ticker, um, which unfortunately with FCEL would have been good if I rode this one a little bit longer. But ultimately, the front side was quite limited um, at the point where I started trading it. So last ticker, 80 MP. This was one of the lead gappers on the day. The ticker I'm up on the most, not even the most impressive ticker, just somehow, I don't know, I think I got a little lucky on this one. So 80 MP. Big resistance at around 1.5, um, but knowing that we had that big resistance at 1.5 allowed me to try to get a little bit of aggressive um, until we reached that area. So let's go and zoom in how I traded this one in the beginning. So ADMP had a, this is like what, a 30% move, sold off a little bit, and then I bought this first pullback here near VWAP and the 9 EMA, um, popped up, sold right away. 
um, in, in chunks. Mo let's see, if most of my size was somewhere in this area, um, and I, I it looks like this last sell was really good, but I actually sold almost near the low of this green candle. Um, and then I was kind of done trading it. I didn't trade any of this, even though this was, I think, over 40% at this point, so I should have, no, 35%. Yeah, that's probably why I was so cautious trading it. I did a little bit of a breakout trade here, nothing too good. Um, and then after this trade, this is when I was like up five, six percent on the day. And that's when I had right after that, I had the big IO loss right here. This is where my I had my big IO loser. So after that, I was kind of like annoyed because all my front side trading was like really not that great. Um, so I was like, let me do a little bit of backside trading um, all in this area. This was backside trading here. And uh, it wasn't the worst. I think I, I kind of walked away break even on it, though. I had some winners, some losers. Um, so it wasn't the best backside trading. You gotta be, always be really careful with backside because you're always risking more than you could potentially make. Um, so you have negative risk reward. Um, so you're always looking to scalp, like you're, you're just like, you're not even looking for a base hit. You're looking for like a 1.5% uh, move, which is already pretty good. Um, so yeah, I did some scalp trading on ADMP, also didn't really work that well. Um, eventually there was a break here and I traded into this breakout, um, took profits very, very quickly as you can see. Um, and yeah, that was it on ADMP. So just, you know, a few base hits kind of paved the way for me to end the day green. But I think overall, I'm, I'm kind of frustrated on my trading today. I feel like it could have easily been a thousand dollar plus profit day, um, pretty much by just adjusting my trading on IO being like, you know, trading what's obviously in front of me. And that is those extended pullbacks. We saw it, I don't know, five, six times. And, and every time I was somehow on the wrong side of IO, closing right before the pop or buying into the pop and then losing on the, uh, the, the, um, the sell off. So kind of frustrating there, but it is what it is. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about two tickers uh, worth mentioning here. Uh, let's go to our IRA account. We got nice big pop today on SoFi. So let's pull it up. I have several videos on SoFi. So I just kind of want to update you guys on my um, uh, thesis here on this ticker. And look at that. Look at that front side. Now that is a nice front side. This is a front side that when we see it on a small cap, this will be like, you know, 100% move right here. And you could just milk it all the way up. I cannot wait. Oh, I cannot wait till we have those moves again. So when you see IO and you're you're always wondering, Alex, why are you buying near the highs and why are you buying those pullbacks? This is why, because usually once we're, you know, the market heats up a little bit in October historically is a hot month this month, uh, this year, it's not um, so far, but you just ride these and then you keep adding into your adding into the breakouts, adding into the breakouts until the breaks in the nine EMA and you could walk away with some really nice winners. Unfortunately, we're not really getting that action right now, but that's that's why I'm, I'm buying near these highs. I'm buying high with the, with the goal of selling higher. Um, this is a little bit different than your classic um, buy low, sell high. So that's that's uh, SoFi, really good action today. I really, really like what we're seeing here. I like the big volume coming in here and I like that we're riding this front side here. Um, we have these higher lows, really, really nice pullback here. I'm looking for this shoulder to be reached. We talked already about that in the last video. I'm not taking profits yet. I wanna see how it performs today and ideally tomorrow. And then if we break above 22.5, uh, I'll probably be taking profits in this area with the intention of buying back because I do think we could have a rally above form a high of 28.26. So I've already done several trades on this ticker and I was trading it before the merger. So we've already had, um, I think one really good win on SoFi and now we're looking for a second good win on SoFi. Uh, the, the second ticker I wanna talk about really quickly here is Coin. Um, coin, similar thing. We have, look at this, a perfect triple bottom. We have one bottom here uh to another bottom and then another bottom here so that's three retests and then we have look at this we have why does that not there you go we have a higher low here so we have a triple bottom and now we have a higher low and we are what it looks to be putting in right now a higher high so C O I N coin uh, Coinbase is officially trending higher, and this is looking really good. I have an investment portfolio with quite a lot of coin, um, about thirty thousand dollars of coin, and I think I'm I think today I'm officially in the green. Um, I've been buying this one since the um, since the direct public offering, so somewhere in this area. I think my first trade was like a three seventy, and then I've been averaging down into this one. 
all into this area. I think my last trade was at like a 225 and I haven't bought any more since I got a full size on COIN at the moment. So I'm gonna keep holding this one. I wanna see a move over 300. I have no intention really of selling it yet. I think we'll probably hit maybe 350 with a maybe eventually a big pullback. I have no idea what's gonna happen. I do think with a market cap of around $62 um, billion, it's getting a little bit high, not to mention we've had offerings on this one, so I'm not really sure if we're gonna get to 429 um, again. We'll, we'll see what happens. My intention on coin is to hold it, to keep holding it as long as the crypto rally is happening. And that's pretty much what we're seeing right now. If we just go to Bitcoin, it just hit 62,000 again. So as long as Bitcoin creeps higher here, over um, the former high and Bitcoin and the altcoins, um, which sh should be rallying soon here as well, are on a bullish move, which I think we're gonna be ending the year strong um, with cryptocurrency. I wanna keep holding Coinbase. And as soon as everyone is talking about cryptocurrency at your you know, a co-working space, at your office, on the road, at the grocery store, you name it, when everyone's talking about it, that's probably a good time to sell your crypto uh, at least temporarily before you buy it back and definitely uh, coin. Let me just pull up my Twitter recently and I made a post here when I was driving through Miami uh, on October 11th here and look at this. Um, I'm not sure how well you guys can see this picture. Let me zoom in here a little bit more. Um, oh, that actually did not zoom on a copy image link. Let's pull up the image. Uh, yeah, there it is. Let's zoom in here. So this was a massive banner on the highway in Miami and says earn up to 3.5% back on Bitcoin. That's BlockFi. Um, they do a cryptocurrency credit card. And these are good indicators that crypto is in a bull market. When you see all this popping up everywhere, uh, things like this, you know that cryptocurrency is in bull market because if it was in a bear market and nobody wanted to talk, talk about cryptocurrency, BlockFi would not be putting big advertisements out on very expensive uh, places in Miami. So what I actually have, I actually really like uh, BlockFi as well. And if you guys want to check out, um, yeah, here's mine, here's my BlockFi. Uh, Visa uh, credit card and guys if you want to check this out you can get up to $250 when you create an account at BlockFi to get started. This credit card is even better than the Amazon Prime credit card which is probably one of my favorite credit cards that give you 5% back on all Amazon purchases. This one gives you 3.5% back on all purchases your first three months and then 1.5 back in Bitcoin uh, after that. So 1.5 is still better than that 1% the Chase Amazon Prime credit card gives you on all purchases that aren't gas station and that aren't Amazon Prime or Whole Foods. So for me, the BlockFi card is really is really great and it's also just absolutely hilarious the fact that I saw it on the highway and we were in traffic of course we were in Miami we're in traffic it doesn't look like it but the other lane was not moving um, and I was driving and when we were totally on standstill that's when I took the picture in case you guys are wondering I wasn't like doing some crazy uh, stunt in the car anyway guys SoFi very bullish Coinbase very bullish Bitcoin very bullish on all these asset classes especially as long as the overall crypto market is looking very aggressive and again, I'm looking to eventually sell when everyone is talking about crypto. That's usually a good indicator to take some profits. Hopefully tomorrow we have a little bit more small cap action. Good luck to anyone that keeps on trading today. I will see you guys then first thing tomorrow morning. Don't forget to drop a like on the way out. Easiest way to support the channel. Subscribe if you're new and like always, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.